Moving on to our main report today, the Indonesian hospitality industry has begun to breathe a sigh of relief and to show signs of life after experiencing stagnation for almost two years during the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic. The room occupancy rate continues to increase. The hotel industry was among the hardest hit business sectors during the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 and 2021. The quarantine period, closing borders and travel limitations imposed during the pandemic led hospitality and tourism businesses to suffer tremendous losses. During the early months of the pandemic, Indonesia's hotel occupancy rate plunged to 19.7% in March 2020 compared with 52.3% in the same month in the previous year. The hotel business started to recover in mid-2022 after the government gradually eased travel restrictions. The average room occupancy rate of classified hotels in Indonesia in 2022 sharply increased to 47.80% from 36.21% in 2021. The recovery continues in the following months, largely driven by the increase in the number of domestic and foreign tourists after the easing of the COVID-19 related travel restrictions. The number of international tourist arrivals in Indonesia in 2022 reached 5.7 million, an increase of 250% from the previous year, Statistics Indonesia reported. Meanwhile, Tourism and Creative Economy Minister Sandiaga Uno estimated the number of domestic tourist trips reached 700 million, a sharp increase from 275 million in 2019. EPS recorded that the room occupancy rate of classified hotels in Indonesia in January 2023 rose to 44.86% from 42.43% in January 2022. However, the figure declined from 56.9% in December 2022 when the number rose sharply due to the year and holidays. The improvement did not only occur in the room occupancy rate, but also in the hospitality business in general. Based on data from Colliers Indonesia, the hotel business in Jakarta in 2022 showed a significant growth compared to the previous years. With such business improvement, many investors resumed their hotel development projects in Jakarta. In fact, in 2022, two five-star hotels were officially opened, namely Park Hyatt and St. Regis. The two hotels are located near Jakarta's business center with a total of 500 rooms. Three other star-rated hotels are expected to open in Jakarta this year. However, many hotels are still experiencing financial problems despite the increase in the room occupancy. The sluggish business due to the pandemic has caused many hotels to suffer huge losses. The hospitality business still needs stimulus from the government to recover from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. The easing of the electricity payment in 2020 and the postponement of debt payments until 2023 greatly helped the hotel industry to survive. However, if the relaxation is stopped after 2023, it will become a nightmare for hoteliers. The Indonesian Hotel and Restaurant Association, or PHF, hopes that the relaxation will be extended until 2025. Meanwhile, the government hopes that the holding of a number of international events in Indonesia in 2023 is expected to further increase the number of domestic and foreign tourists. In 2023, at least four international level sport events will be held in Indonesia. In late February, the F1 Powerball Championship is held in Bovale, in Sumatra, and received around 25,000 tourists. Other sport tourism events include the FIFA World Cup U20, the ANOC World Beach Games or AWBG, the 2023 FIFA World Cup. Tourism and Creative Economy Minister Sandiaga Uno is optimistic 
that the holding of such international events will help the government achieve its plan to its arrival target. This year, the ministry expects to double to 7.4 billion this year, and domestic tourist trips to double to 1.4 billion. Hopefully, the tourist arrival target can be achieved so that the occupancy rate of the country's hotel will increase further. The hotel business started to recover in mid-2022 after the government gradually eased travel restrictions in Indonesia. A stronger sign of recovery has been seen in the following months as reflected in the continuing increase in the occupancy rate. It is an honor for Economic Outlook to have with us today Bapak Maulana Yusran, the Secretary General of the Indonesian Hotel and Restaurant Association. He will share with us his points of view and latest updates in the country's hotel industry. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us, Bapak Maulana Yusran. Yes, Pauline. Thank you. Yes. So we would like to ask you the update on the latest conditions of hotel industry in the country. Yes. Actually, if we comparing year on year occupancy rate in uh, year 2022 to 2019, it can be concluded that there has been a recovery in hotel business as an occupancy. In 2022, the occupancy rate is 56.90%, while in 2019, the occupancy rate is 53.80%, an increase of 3.1% in 2022. However, uh, from revenue point of view, occupancy rate increase has not reflected a recovery in hotel revenue. Financial expenses in hotel industry during 2020 to 2022 were too high. And up to this point, the domestic market is not yet evenly distributed, which results in some areas have not yet recovered their occupancy rate level. The, uh, the, the largest contribution in Indonesia hotel industry is mostly corporate and government events and activities. When talking about foreign tourists, the market are only in some provinces such as Bali, Rio Island, Lombok in West Nusa Tenggara, and Manado in North Sulawesi. So the other things that uh, uh, also uh, 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 has to, uh, uh, for me to, to point is the result of why the domestic market is not yet evenly distributed are from uh, increasing airfare, decrease in, uh, in flight frequency since uh, 2021, COVID-19 traveling document requirement, especially for public transportation, uh, ASM uh, traveling budget cut or tightening uh, budget of the government official traveling. And the other thing is the government focus on the uh, development of new Indonesia's capital city. But one thing that we have to appreciate from the government is the uh, the strategy of the recovery is from uh, for for the Indonesian tourism like uh, 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 events such as uh, B20, G20, and uh, some event like uh, Formula E, and the, the last one is the in, in Danau Toba uh, Formula uh, in uh, water sport. So how? How impactful are those international events to increase businesses and revenue for hotel players in the country? Uh, it will uh, good impact, especially for the uh, province, yeah? uh, uh, the, 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 the province that has the event. Then uh, actually also impact for the incoming tourists uh, will, will, will affect uh, so much. For now, uh, we, have, we, we see that the increasing from the numbers of uh, incoming tourists in Indonesia. So our President Joko Widodo has just uh, announced the banning of iftar for seafield services. Do you think this will impact a restaurant business? 
Yes, actually, if we uh, if we take a look for the year on year occupancy uh, in Indonesia, yeah, we have the low season for three months. Yeah, actually, the uh, first quarter uh, plus uh, the Ramadan season. So in the Ramadan season, the hotel and restaurant uh, usually they have the uh, occupancy, uh, not the occupancy. I mean the the income, uh, especially from the iftar, you know. So uh, we, uh, as I as I said before, that uh, uh, government activity uh, is the uh, so, uh, to me uh, um, the big market for hotel industry and restaurant. So uh, uh, the the uh, what uh, the president said that the government uh, cannot uh, has the uh, iftar uh, in uh, that 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 must be a problem with the hotel occupancy, you know, uh, hotel income. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Maulana Yusran. I would like to elaborate more. You mentioned about the different level of recovery in hotels in big cities and small cities. As we all know, our government has tried uh, to conduct several efforts, for example, uh, designing new tourism destinations. What do we need to take actions to make this, you know, it will be like uh, spread it equally for hotels in big cities as well as in small cities. Yeah, actually, uh, I, I will give you the illustration. Yeah, the province which has uh, 2022 20, occupancy rate above national average, like, such as uh, uh, they are stronger for the domestic traveler such as uh, uh, Sumatra. In Sumatra, we have like Sumatra Selatan and Lampung. And in, in Java Island, we have Jakarta, West Java, uh, Jogja, uh, Jawa Timur, and Banten. And also in Kalimantan. In Kalimantan, we have Kalimantan Barat, Kalimantan Tengah, uh, uh, Kalimantan Selatan, and Kalimantan Timur. And also in Sulawesi, we have Manado, or Sulawesi Selatan, and Papua Barat. But they are all uh, the, the strong uh, province that the highest occupancy rate is in uh, is Kalimantan, because again uh, you know, uh, the the government still has uh, uh, now has a focus for on development of new Indonesian capital city in the area, and seen from the province that high foreign tourist contribution uh, is Bali, Rio Island, West Nusa Tenggara, North Sulawesi, Jakarta. So with the exception of Jakarta, other province in Java had already sur surpassed the level of occupancy rate in 2019. Uh, in the Sumatra on the uh, Sumatra, uh, North Sumatra and Lampung. So uh, that's what uh, we uh, can uh, can describe uh, which uh, strong which one is uh, the the province that strong with the domestic traveler and then the other uh, province also strong with the uh, uh, foreign tourists uh, market. Come back to you. So, Maulana, you mentioned before that the rate of e occupancy has returned to normal or has recovered, but not with the revenue. It's still challenging for the hotel management. How do you cope with these problems? Yeah, uh, yeah, the, yeah. That is the, now uh, we we rely on the the the, the, the government relaxation, you know, steps such as uh, 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 relaxation policy on credit and financing restructuring through the POJK until uh, March thirty first in twenty twenty four. So uh, uh, the other things that we have to do in, uh, to, to survive in the uh, financial problem is uh, like uh, uh, doing the efficiency for the operation, the hotel operation, that's most uh, important. Then the other thing is like uh, uh, convert the operation with the digital uh, technology, such as uh, using the robotic and something like that. Back to you. So the financial difficulties experienced by the hotels in Indonesia, uh, will it lead to uh, layoffs in these days, as we've seen in other industries, especially in technology industries, how about in hotel? How strong that uh, 
hotels management can carry on without laying off? Yeah, now we 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 doing good, yeah, uh, because the increasing occupancy that uh, we have since uh, uh, 2022 until now, then uh, we start to 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 to, to, to have that uh, the, the the employee that uh, before in uh, actually for from the 2020 to 2021 they being uh, 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 lay off, you know, at that time. But now it's uh, do, uh, they still uh, they start to work uh, come back out to, to work again. So right now, most of us will think that pandemic is kind of thing in the past, but we have to be always careful with the new wave of COVID. Like as uh, the hotel industry uh, representative, do you have like emergency plan to? anticipate a new wave of COVID-19? Yeah, I think all business learned so much from 2020 experience. When pandemic uh, COVID-19 hit, none of us, a business was ready to that extreme condition. The overall company doesn't have emergency or reserve fund more than six months of its operational expenses, especially when we are talking about tourism industry. Tourism industry relies heavily on domestic movement and the open of international border of for cross country movement. If borders are restricted or closed, uh, automatically tourism business will adversely affected. Then again, uh, now uh, we, from the, the learning experience that we have with since 2020, so uh, that we, we have to be careful to expand the business and also uh, to manage the. Uh, uh, the cash reserve uh, on our uh, business. But. So a lesson learned from the pandemic is preparing stronger financial buffer. Thank you very much, Bapak Maulana Yusran, the Secretary General of the Indonesian Hotel and Restaurant Association for joining us live on Economic Outlook. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.